What's up, guys? Jake Adams here, and uh, <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for tuning in to my kind of impromptu live stream last week on Friday where I unboxed uh, a box of live coral from ACI Aquaculture as we uh, try to ensure the longevity and the existence of certain coral strains uh, in, through the path of Hurricane Irma. I'm really thankful that that storm has turned out to be a, a lot less of a problem than it possibly could have been. But in the meantime, I ended up with some really, really nice corals. Really didn't get the chance to show you the corals, and I didn't get a chance to see the corals, how I wanted them to share them with you until I got them in the tank. So I've made this follow-up video to show you some of the amazing corals that I was sent uh, by AC Aquaculture. We've got a really cool uh, cross-spectrum mix of corals, just about a dozen frags. So they're looking really good and uh, this is kind of the unboxing or the, the, the wrap up to the unboxing that I wanted to show you uh, to show you the corals um, in their natural colors or their aquarium colors um, so without further ado uh, here are the Hurricane Irma rescue corals that I received from ACI Aquaculture what was really cool about opening this box of corals is uh, when I spoke to Chris, there was one coral in particular, the uh, Truncata flabellum, that I was really interested in safeguarding, but I told him to go ahead and send some of the most uh, valuable, irreplaceable stuff that he had, at least on a personal level. So every coral that I opened um, was a complete surprise, and then when I got him in the tank, I just knew that I had to do this follow-up video where I show you all the corals um, up close and say a few words about them. So the only special request I made was uh, for any kind of a frag of like a pink tenuous acro because I know there's a lot of those coming in from Indonesia. And here you can see it uh, right next to my Walt Disney acro in the back left, which has some pink but it's not super duper strong, uh, at least not yet. So um, this coral is actually really interesting, it has uh, quite excerpt coralite, so I'm not super sure if it's a tenuous or vermiculata, but it definitely has that pink factor and you can see this video was made uh, just the day after I put the corals in the tank and the polyps are already wide open and these corals are clearly very happy. Here's a top down look at those two corals with the Walt Disney acro in the top left and the new pink uh, tenuous from ACI Aquaculture in the bottom right. This coral is a little bit more of a mystery to me because it has that familiar appearance of like a green hulk, Alstera, or maybe an Echinata, but basically it looks like a green Echinata, Acropora Echinata, from Bali with greener tips. Um, so yeah, normally a totally green Echinata wouldn't be very exciting, but one that has even greener tips is actually quite standout. As bright as the body of the color is, um, the tips are even brighter. Here's a top-down look at a couple of those corals right next to each other. And uh, yeah, the double mint uh, green Acro Echinata is really interesting. It's got those big fuzzy polyps and uh, I think it's going to be a really happy aquarium coral. It shouldn't be um, any trouble to keep uh, alive, growing, and colorful. And uh, I think I got the perfect spot for it on this frag rack. And you can see right off to the right, there's this other coral that's uh, just an encrusted nubbin. And I have no idea what this coral is. But the base actually is kind of that rosy pink uh, color, again with those uh, beautiful contrasting green tips, uh, very different from the dual green Echinata. Here's a shot of it uh, from the side, which didn't turn out really all that great. I was having some trouble capturing the coloration of this particular coral. But from the top down, man, the contrast between that red base and the green branches is really, really pronounced. So this is another one that has a really beautiful coloration. I have no idea what this coral looked like um, when it was freshly imported, but uh, I've got it a really, really good spot. I can't wait to see what it develops into. So this is an assortment of the other corals uh, placed high up on the frag rack. And there's a funky little Monty and a couple zoanthid frags along with a zoanthid that I had before. So I'm not sure what these corals are supposed to look like, what these zoanthid polyps are supposed to look like. One of them is pink with a little bit of a yellow center, and the other one is a very neat lavender purple, almost a lilac, with kind of a green skirt and green tentacles around the, the sides of it. So very interested to see what these polyps are gonna do, uh, especially in this highlight environment where they can get all the light, food, and flow that they need. And then the only monopora I received is this uh, curious, cute uh, pink frag that has very small yellow polyps. Chris told me that this coral actually didn't look anything like this when he first got it. And it went through an episode and completely transformed. So again, looking forward to seeing what this guy does. 
Now this coral is a complete stunner. I'm talking about that Euphilia on my other frag rack. Now despite the color, which is just an absolutely ludicrous shade of like a, a neon yellow orange gold, really hard to pin down. I mean, I have some green Euphilias in my tank, but this thing has got some really cool color. Besides that, it's uh, actually believed to perhaps be a new species because I think it has the skeleton of like a wall hammer, um, but it has the, almost like these frog spawn like tentacles. I can't remember exactly uh, what Vincent called this because it came from Bali Aquarium, um, but uh, it's not a, a single branch. That's actually kind of a sliver of its meandering wall, but the color is really cool. And uh, again, I'm saying this about a lot of the frags. I can't wait to see what it'll turn into. And got a couple of war corals that definitely need to cook under these lights for a while to see what they're gonna turn into. The coral I was most excited about adopting is this beautiful, non-photosynthetic uh, Truncato flabellum coral. It's uh, very thin, but uh, kind of wedge-shaped and it has this huge uh, polyp that comes out sometimes. And these polyps have uh, um, these little spots that are the, uh, the spheres, the acrospheres, um, that have the nematocysts in them. So it's also got kind of like a white and red uh, candy cane stripe appearance going on. It's not really pronounced. So um, I've got this guy right now uh, actually underneath one of my other corals. Um, right near the front of the glass where I can take a good look at them and make sure that he gets a lot of food. So uh, very uh, mission accomplished by receiving this guy in good shape. So two other corals that I kind of ran out of room for on the regular frag rack is um, it looks like one small piece of a Micromusa and then um, a double colored Favia, maybe a Goniastria of some sort. So the uh, Goniastria actually has a beautiful green coloration with these green uh, stripes radiating from the center and kind of a yellow orange mouth that I couldn't quite uh, put my finger on. So yeah, these corals also look beautiful. And the other one was this uh, Micromusa that uh, it's a weird species. It's often confused with like a Favia of Hervites, but it has this uh, green neon green outer edge and kind of a pink mouth. So I started them off uh, down in the gravel, but then I ended up actually putting these on magnets and uh, put them on the glass along with a couple of other corals. You know you're running out of room when you come up with the most creative ways to place corals on the back glass. So these are actually all on magnetic frag discs where their discs have actually been glued to magnets so I can position things around the back of the tank. So um, that white, that clean white disc at the top is actually um, a kind of a rainbow style Ghaniopora with really, really small polyps. As you guys have been following along, you know that I'm really hot for Ghanis. And although it looks like a Ghani, um, all the way to the right in the green with kind of the red polyps is a Madrasis, a really unique species that kind of looks like a Ghani, but actually prefers lower flow but, and lower light, but it should develop even crazier colors than any Ghani you've ever seen. Last but certainly not least is a beautiful frag of red and acropora. See, when I pulled this coral out, uh, fresh out of the bag on the live stream, there was no way to tell what it was besides an acropora. But I saw some red and acropora at Macna. So this is a coral that was actually on my wish list, and I'm so thrilled to have a piece of it now. It should be a fast grower, so should be able to share some of this back with uh, Chris and some of my local friends in no time.